Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at something called the direction angles of, of 3D vectors. The reason we have to do this is because in three dimensions, it's pretty difficult to describe the direction that a vector points. In two dimensions, it's pretty easy because you've got your north, south, east, and west as references. In three dimensions, it's a little harder. So one way to do it is to describe it in terms of direction angles. So here we go. Let's, uh, let's write our title here. This is going to be looking at direction angles direction angles, and these only apply to 3D vectors, because in two dimensions we can just use the direction of the vector. Very simple. All right, so, so let's define what the direction angles are. So there are three of them. Uh, the first direction angle is the angle alpha. Alpha is the angle formed between the vector and the positive x-axis, and the positive x-axis, okay? So that's alpha. Alpha is the angle form between whatever vector you're looking at and the positive x-axis. So again, these are, these are defined in terms of some given vector. The next one is beta. Beta, beta is the angle formed between the same vector and the positive, the positive, I bet you can guess it, y-axis, okay? And then the last one is gamma. So gamma, you start up here, come down, curl, and come back around. Gamma is the angle formed between the given vector, still the same vector, and the positive z axis okay so so we might we might work an example here uh, where we find these angles and then I might try to draw a picture um, and maybe we can kind of look at what's going on there okay so so that's the definitions of the direction angles there's three of them alpha beta gamma alpha relates back to the positive x-axis beta relates back to the positive y-axis and gamma re relates back to the positive z-axis now, uh, what's nice about this is um, what we can do is we know how to find the angle between a vector. We know how to find an angle between a vector and another vector. So if we can think of each of these positive axes in terms of some simple vector, then we could use the concept to find the angle between the vectors um, the same way. All right. So, all we need here is any vector that's on the positive x-axis. So basically, if it's on the positive x-axis, it could be any positive x component, 0 for y, 0 for z. And similarly, for the, for, for the positive y-axis, it would be 0 for x, a positive for y, a 0 for z. And lastly, 0 for x, 0 for y, and a positive for z. Now, Again, choose any vector you want and then find the angle between that vector, which lives on the positive axis, and the given vector, and you'll have your direction cosines. But the, the calculations become quite a bit easier if you decide to choose the unit vectors that point in the positive x, positive y, or positive z direction. So in other words, instead of just picking any old random positive number, Let's, let's choose maybe our favorite positive number. I don't know. One sounds like a good choice because that guarantees a unit vector. And you'll see when we get into the calculations that uh, using one, the unit vectors, can make the calculations quite a bit easier. Okay, so let's, let's jump into an example now. So let's say, let's say we want to determine the direction angles, determine the direction angles for the vector, uh, let's give it a name, let's maybe call it vector V, and again I'm just going to make up some random vector, let's say um, 
negative 4, 1, 3, okay? So, uh, if I want the direction angles, then let's start with alpha. Remember what alpha is? See if you can recall that definition without looking back at your notes. Um, it's the angle between what and what? Well, alpha is the angle between this vector, the given vector, and the positive x-axis. So, um, in fact, it's the angle between this vector and the unit vector, the angle between v and the unit vector 1, 0, 0, which we know as i, because i lives on the positive x-axis. So how do we calculate the angle between two vectors? Well, the same way we do in two dimensions. We do cosine inverse of the dot product of the two vectors, so in this case, v dot i hat, divided by the magnitudes of the vectors multiplied, okay? So, in this case, it's cosine inverse. Let's fill in our vectors. V is negative 4, 1, 3. Dot product with I, which is 1, 0, 0. Divided by the magnitude of V, using vertical bars to denote magnitude. Take that magnitude times the magnitude of the unit vector 1, 0, 0. Okay, so we get cosine inverse of. Now dot product, remember, you multiply corresponding components. So negative four times one is negative four. Plus one times zero is zero. Don't need to add that. Plus three times zero is zero. Don't need to add that. You can already see the beauty of having a unit vector here where two of the components, in fact, are zero. It makes it super easy to do the dot product. So our numerator ends up being the x component of v, because when you do the dot product of uh, this vector with i, the one and the three turn into zero, so all that's left is the negative four. Then on the bottom, we're gonna have the magnitude of negative four, one, three. So that's the square root of four squared plus one squared plus three squared. So that's 16 plus 1 plus 9 times the magnitude of the unit vector. Well, by definition, a unit vector has a magnitude of 1. So that just turns into 1. And again, we see why it's so nice to have a unit vector. This guy is always going to be 1 when we look at its magnitude. So what we end up with is, I'll go this way just to make sure I don't run out of room on the screen. We've got negative 4 over 16 plus 1 plus 9 is 26. So we end up with negative 4 over the square root of 26 times 1, still just the square root of 26. That's what we get. And then we type that into our calculator. If we want this angle in degrees, which is the standard way to write it, make sure we're in degree mode. So I'll do cosine inverse of the fraction negative 4 over the square root of 26. Type it all in at once. And it looks like that's about 142 degrees. So that's our alpha, okay? So I'll just write that up here. Alpha is 142 degrees, about 142 degrees. Now, the good news is once you do that once, the beta and gamma end up being pretty simple. So I'm just gonna erase and modify the parts that I need to. You make sure to pause and write down whatever you want to write if you're taking notes on this. But this is going to turn into beta. Beta is going to be the angle between V and J. So I'm going to change all my I's to J's. Okay. Which is certainly going to change a lot of stuff down here. All right, so I'll use a different color to indicate what I've changed, okay? So hopefully the green will show up. So if I want beta, then I'm looking for the angle between the vector and the positive y-axis, in other words, j hat. So I need to do the dot product of v and j, 
divided by the magnitude of V times the magnitude of J. And then here's V. V doesn't change through any of these uh, direction angles. But J is now 0, 1, 0. Okay? My dot product is going to be different now because negative 4 is going to multiply by 0. So the, the negative 4 zeroes out. 1 times 1 is 1. So I've got 0 plus 1 plus 0. The 3 zeroes out also. So when you do beta, your numerator is going to be the y component of your vector. The denominator is going to be exactly the same because the magnitude of v did not change. And the magnitude of all the unit vectors is always 1. Okay? So we end up with cosine inverse of 1 over the same square root of 26. In fact, maybe you can see this. I'll see if the camera will zoom in for you. I'm just going to change that negative 4 on top into a 1 uh, by editing the formula I already have rather than retyping all of it. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but I took a chance. So beta is about 77 degrees. So I'll write that up here. And that's the angle between this vector and the positive y-axis. Now let's do gamma. Same process. So I'm going to change this to gamma, which is the angle between b and the positive z-axis, or k-hat. So I'm going to change all my j's. Oops, didn't need to erase that. Okay, so I use purple now for gamma. So for gamma, it's the angle between the vector and k hat, which is the unit vector 0, 0, 1. The dot product now, when I dot product this with 0, 0, 1, the negative 4 and 1 turn to zeros, and then 3 times 1 is 3. So my numerator for gamma is just the z component of v. My denominator is still the same because the magnitude of v didn't change. And the magnitude of all three unit vectors, i, j, and k, are always 1. So we just end up with cosine inverse of 3 over the square root of 26. Again, I can use the same formula. And I'm just going to go back and make my numerator into a, a 3. And I get about 54 degrees for gamma. That's about what it is out here in my garage right now, 54 degrees. That's not too bad. So gamma is 54 degrees. All right, so that we've done the work. We've found the direction angles. I'm going to attempt to draw a picture to show you uh, where they are, though. Again, it's going to be a sketch, so it's certainly not going to be precise. But I want to, I want to go back to the definition so you understand what these mean. So. If I draw my vector negative 4, 1, 3, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick my origin. Uh, let me use a light color here. Uh, maybe not, because the axes here are kind of important. So let's establish the positive x, y, and z axes, since those are our points of reference. So the positive x axis, let's say, is there. The positive y axis, let's say, is there. The positive z axis, let's say, is there. Those are all perpendicular to each other. So where is vector v? Well, vector v starts at the origin, goes four units back. So it goes four units back. I'm not going to label just to keep things simple here. It goes one unit to the right. Okay. And it goes three units up. So we're going to have a rough little sketch here of our vector. And I'm going to draw the box that contains our vector so we can see the three-dimensional perspective. Okay? So that's the box that contains vector v. Now vector v starts here. Remember, it started at the origin. Went four units back, one unit right, three units up. So it terminates right there. So the vector actually looks something like this. So you can see now it's in this, it's behind the plane that sits on the, y, the YZ plane. It's back there and to the right. So what are these angles? Where are these angles in this picture? Well, alpha is the angle between this vector and the positive x-axis. So if you imagine, that swings around here like this, 
and that's 142 degrees, okay? Beta is the angle between this vector and the positive y-axis. So that's, again, this vector is tilted back off of the yz plane, so that kind of swings around here, and that's 77 degrees. And then finally, gamma is the angle between the vector and the positive z-axis, which again, the vector is tilted back, so we're going this direction, and that's 54 degrees, okay? So, uh, not a great drawing. Um, computer software could do a much better job than that, but that's the rough idea of what direction angles are for three-dimensional vectors.